Hey everybody, Asher here. It is time to dive back into Remnants of the Precursors, a game developed by Ray Fowler and friends. It's coming out in full release on December 25th. This is a 4 -X, Space 4X remake of the wonderful Master of Orion 1. So if you're unfamiliar with it, get ready for a nice old school treat. The uh, home screen keeps wanting to go, the illustrations. Maybe we'll let that cycle here in just a second, but I do want to say we are going to be playing a modded version of this game, specifically made by Modnar, who, if you watched my last series on this game, he did a lot of comments here uh, while sh while I was streaming and everything. Now, this is not going to be a stream series. There's a few reasons for that I'll go into there, but I think it's probably appropriate before we get started to go ahead and just pull up real quick what the uh, changes in the mod pack are, because I did one with I did the Modnar grouping with custom races and everything. Maybe one of the most significant ones is the Governor mod which takes out a lot of the game's micromanagement and just kind of lets you focus on playing. There's some new map shapes that we'll get into as well. We'll actually be playing on one of the new map shapes. Ooh, excuse me. Um, we'll also have some other changes like increased minimum uh, Empire Homeworld separation. This is actually eight light years instead of ten light years, which is just a correction that I think has been made by the time this video will be up here as well. Um, there's lots of uh, new random events, there's customization for difficulty level, some things that we'll be diving to, some things that we won't. There's some additional options menus and everything like that, but I just want to go ahead and say up front that I appreciate the love the community has for this game and sort of the all the feedback that I've gotten in my last series is great, and by all means just throw everything at me on YouTube in the comments as well. And if you see someone doing Remnants of the Precursors as a game, give it a like. You can go check out the Discord. You can go check out the Reddit page. You can check it, I think, on itch.io. That's where it's available for free. Did I mention it's free? December 25th, uh, full release here. But we're going to hit the new game button. And we're going to be playing as one of the new races. Now, Modnar has uh, modified these. We have our 12 default races. And then you can see he's gone the extra mile for um, the art here. We have the Neo Humans, the Yunas. The Jack Trades, the very dapper early games, uh, the War Demons, and um, the Gearheads. We're going to be playing as Neo Humans, though, because I think they are one of the more interesting groups here. I'm going to try to random a better name here. MC Escher. That's fine. Main character Escher. Now, it's not just that we have deal with it glasses for the humans, because I typically don't like playing as humans as these things, but. What they do have is very weak ground fighters, which is going to change some of my strategizing quite a bit from the last save I have. Also, very spacious ships and starting on a rich planet. So the planet has less max population, but it has more resources. So we kind of have a good early game bump, and we have less ship health, but more ship space. It's going to be fairly interesting. So I do want to say as well that once again, I do welcome feedback. Um, I did appreciate all of the learning that I did. It was very much a learning stream game that I did last time. But here I want to be able to make my own mistakes as the Neo Humans. I'm going to be making quite a bit. I did actually run into some test games where I made some fundamental, very dumb boneheaded gameplay mistakes. And I'll cross those as we talk about them just as a nice refresher for myself and for anyone else who's watching. And there's probably, now that I've said that, going to be some more crap that goes on so let's look at the settings real quick just so we can go into the game here now i'm going to show off some of the new maps monar suggested that i do it a thousand systems just so you can see the shape better so we have a uh, spiral but then we also have text which we can do home world name remnants of the precursor master of orion one i think you can modify this in a text file if you just want to be silly there's things like that we have clusters which are pretty cool we have swirl clusters, which are incredibly pretty. Um, some clusters, all clusters for the grid. Spiral arms, which is, should be fairly familiar. Um, maze, I think this is a really interesting style of map for a larger game, maybe even for a smaller game. I'm not going to be doing a maze game, though. Shuriken, so if you want to ninja star somebody and take their eye out in Remnants of the Precursors, you can do that. Dartboard has some interesting map diversity as well, because we have different types of dartboards. Who knew? Um, Lorenz, also very fascinating because you have your different views of these curves, but we also have some different shapes. Which I think that is a fascinating map concept. But we're going to do Fractal. Now, that's because I like fractals more than anything else, but this is... Uh, 
we have some different options for what kind of fractals we want to do here. So I'm just going to play through them. And I think the one I'm going to pick is um, honestly the leaf shape one. Now, this is not necessarily going to be a balanced map. In one of my test games, one of the AIs ran away on the far corner down here, and it was my neighbor. <laughs> so we'll, um, we'll have some fun with that. But we're not going to be playing on a massive map. I don't even want to play on like 250. I don't want to play on a large map like before. Um, I th but I don't want to go too small, because if we go like down the 70 systems and just have four AIs, it's going to be a little tough. So I think if I go like 150, that's a decent balance. Um, nine AI opponents is probably fine. I tried to go seven on a test save and things felt really empty. But I don't want to go all the way to 11, so I think 9 on 150 systems is okay. Now we can adjust the difficulty. You may notice here 120% on normal. So already on normal difficulty, the AI is going to get a bump. And I'm going to be playing on normal. Uh, as you know, I don't shy away from things being hard or getting my butt kicked here on the channel. So we do have advanced options as well. I'm not going to be activating any of these. Last save, I did activate uh, random AI personalities, but I don't want to deal with that this time because we have modded races. There are also Modnar mod options in case you need more mods in your mods. And I'm not going to turn any, any of these on, but I do want to just talk about them briefly. You can always get Stargates, always have Thorium. Those are self-explanatory. Challenge mode, make the game even harder <laughs> uh, by making your AI opponents better. Uh, getting battle scouts early, not going to do that. Giving multiple worlds at a start. It's kind of like a faster start, but it kind of takes away some of that early game exploration. Random tech starts for asymmetrical starts. That's dangerous. Uh, we're not we're not going to do it here, but it's interesting if you want to shake up the game. Uh, custom difficulty down to 20 all the way up to 500. I'm not going to mess with that. And dynamic difficulty based on relative strengths or weaknesses. I'm not going to mess with that either. We're just going to go the normal package. We're going to go a Modnar AIs. Now I can actually put in Zilmi AIs if I wanted to. We're very familiar with those from the last save here, but since this is a Modnar mod thing, and because I did do a uh, test run or two that had a rogue Zilmi AI in there, uh, he's still doing a lot of work on uh, stuff pre-release and just constantly tinkering with AI. It's amazing to see, but we're going to stick with all Modnar AIs, not even a default package AIs. I just want everybody on the same level playing field so that we can deal with it. That's why we got the shades. Let's hit the start button and dive on. All right, so Neo New Earth. We didn't even talk about the name of the planet. Uh, humans, not necessarily known for their creativity, I guess. So the Neo Human Development, the year is 888. Centuries of isolationistic practice have left behind or have been left behind shattered by optimization breakthroughs in spatial engineering the neo humanity architectural development has unified their people and combined the societal design of art science and technology neo humanity's short stature is believed to have been evolved to believed to have evolved due to the influence of various compounds prevalent in the rich deposits of the minerals running through their homeworld mantle so this is an earth that they screwed up this is neo new earth and apparently it's made them short, which is there's a lot of interesting scientific speculation of uh, what will happen with natural selection and stuff. Once humans start going to other planets, will available nutrients make changes in terms of what gets passed on? Will gravity have influence? That's another discussion for another day because the development has made an unusual trade-offs to favor ship space over armor. But they're fully confident that it'll accomplish their blueprint designed to reorganize the galaxy so our goal is to reorganize the galaxy and we are still neo new earth so we still look like humans we talk like humans we walk like humans and where did we end up on the map okay we are on the far side of ooh, okay i keep i'm gonna keep doing this i'm gonna keep messing up because there's always hot keys that's so that's so different here but what's interesting is that because we're on a weird ish fractal map we have a little bit of a start but we don't really have like a whole cluster of stuff so I'm kind of glad I'm up here because this will let me potentially show some cool stuff early instead of just being parked in a cluster of stars and having everything handed to me uh, that that didn't happen I had a bunch of terrible starts before so I'm sure it's gonna be equally terrible here anyway for those of you unfamiliar with remnants of the precursors this is this is what the game looks like we do have our nice radial map that I will keep on just for a uh, display here but it is a uh, one pl one planet per system just because we're kind of in simplicity's sake 
The tech development is really fascinating if you haven't seen it before. But right now we have Neo New Earth that is rich, arid, size 80. We have our special governor on that's going to be building the industry here. But okay, we have an unexplored white star and an unexplored yellow star. My guess is that the yellow star is what we want, so we're going to send a scout and a colony ship down here. Try to play that 50-50, which I am very good at losing. And we're just going to hit the next turn. We're going to let the auto governor do its thing. It's pretty much doing what I should be doing, although it's not what I always do. Well, okay, this early in the game it is. Um, but you want growth and you want to build up your factories so that at least at the base game for the neo-humans and most other races... You want to have a ratio of a one to one to two population to factories. That's why we have the max here. But you can see our little space triangles moving in space. All right. So Baron. Okay, I was about to say that better not be the yellow star. So it's a Baron planet size fifty. So Neo, you're going to see a lot of Neo stars here. Um, that's a little bit of a problem. Um, and then we have oh boy. So we have poor resources, size 50, but better population growth. We can work with that. It's kind of a, kind of not great, but here we go. I guess, I guess I can see it. Those mountains are apparently just more plains, only taller. But look, we're, we're still humans. Now the other modded races also have humans walking out here. So we'll figure it out, but I, I love the little, uh, animations here so neo Ilari is what we got and once again we're going to let the auto governor do thing now first mistake that i made and this some of this is just rust me not remembering how to play this game a little bit so we send transports over here it's a very basic thing but we send some transports over here to get the population growth started i could probably send more than 16 um, but we'll just send 16 for now because we want to keep this growing as well but the nice thing about this is that you notice ecology is grayed out. That's because we're going to have, if I go ahead and hit the next turn button, after I try to explore this yellow star, um, we're going to see that the game automatically has moved around to try and get us to get clean and then still going here. Clean means that we're gaining population if we can. So that's pretty good. And we have up here, nothing else that we can really scout. That's a, that's a bit of a bummer. All right, so we don't have a colony ship anymore. And I'm going to be clicking the wrong things for just a little bit. So we're going to say bye-bye, colony ship. It looks pretty. I love I love the ship designs here, but we're going to scrap it. And the reason we're going to scrap it is that one of the first things we need to do is to take advantage of our larger available space, which is one of our traits here. So we're going to make this... You know, I kind of like the purple. We'll stick with the purple for now. We're going to add in here reserve fuel tanks and you can see we still have available space here so we're going to deploy this design and then suddenly we have a long colony thank you windows noises um oh if i could hit the right button more windows noises long colony and suddenly when we build a colony ship we won't have to wait to get within this red circle to actually colonize. Like, we can't actually go on the barren planet yet. Um, and that may be a problem for a little while, to be honest. I need to pull up a chart. There is a whole bunch of documentation with this. I don't remember if barren is on the easier side or on the more difficult side for the things to uh, actually terraform. But we'll, we'll cross that bridge when we reach it for now. Next turn. Um, hopefully scouting bears fruit. Because I'd love to be able to colonize up here. Like, if we don't get a reach in here, we're going to have to improve our propulsion before we go over there. But one of the nice things is that um, for silicoids, which is what I played last time, the rock people, they don't care about hostile environments. They can just do environments anywhere. So it makes early game expansion really a uh, easy like thing. Uh, another mistake that I made, and we'll cross that bridge if we reach it in this video. Um, is that I kind of forgot how the whole colony uh, system works here. So next year, and it's another barren, hostile planet. What a start. So population growth is halved. So that's tough, but at least, at least we can get population here. So 25 out of 50, they'll be okay. You're doing pretty good. So we need 
we need to really hope that we can uh, get some decent planets to start with here because this is going to be potentially a tough start. This is officially a tough start, so we're going to need to tech accordingly, which means um, there's a lot of things I can do. We're going to go for, uh, definitely for propulsion, and we're going to go for planetology. It's kind of our two priorities. I'll actually take down computers for now, as well as weapons. So um, force fields are easy enough to get. I'll keep construction just because that's kind of our calling card. So yeah, um, this is this is what we want. Not not my not the the greatest ever, but we're we're gonna need. We actually we have long colony ships and nothing that we can colonize with. This is a Tough start that we're going to have to sit on for a little bit, but part of the joy of the fractal map is that uh, we're, we're a little spread out here. So we're kind of at the mercy. We now know that somebody's to the north of us. We don't know who they are yet, but right now we have two planets and neither of them are great. So let's see here. We're officially finally about to start getting some tech. And over here, they're still going to be able to grow like once again they're resource poor so their factories are not going to be able to do as much but we'll use this to shove out some population so this is probably you know honestly 9.1 light years away i bet this is somebody else's starter home world or close to it one of these which means i hope this one isn't either or down here because i'd love to have some space to expand otherwise i'm going to have to shove my way out all right so, oh my god and put they put shades on everything Nice. I was not. I was not ready for that. Um, improve industrial tech or reduce waste here. Let's do the one that uh, develops another tech. Improved eco restoration or control barren environment. Well, we have some barren places we need to colonize, so that answers our question. How long do we have until that's ready? Because we're going to need to. Um, Rebuild some other stuff in just a minute. So that's that's a decent planet. This one's I mean, it's a planet. They're all they're all decent at this stage. So we'll tech up a little bit. And then um The hard part is that I'm gonna need you to hard build some colony ships here in just a second. How long is it gonna take? Can we get it in like Five years. All right, so there's one colony ship. And uh, that doesn't look like a scout. That looks like an actual fighter. So let's see if um, we can't really we can't really do this without um, anything else. So let's um. Go ahead, build some fighters. Let's see if we can tell you to scram. And I'll tell you what I did wrong already. And I'm going to have to let this colony ship sit here. See, this is the second mistake that I made. And it's a mistake I made before. And I told myself in my mind, I need to wait until this is done. If we look back at our designs here, this long colony ship is sitting here. And it's very nice and it's very happy. But instead of the standard colony base, we are going to need to put a barren colony base in there. So I'm going to have to, I'm going to keep this one here just because I already hard built it. But see, I told you I was going to, I, I said I would make mistakes and mistakes, dread them, run from them. Mistakes still arrive. We're not building any more fighters. We need to, we need to tech out like crazy. Okay, so they, they kind of ran. Death spores, not great. But we'll we'll unlock other techs potentially that way. So we can drop the planetology for just a little bit. I think weapons is fine. We still want propulsion though, because right now if we look at what we're researching in propulsion, like I love the blade menu here, it just looks so well. So fuel reserves allow ships to go four light years away from planet. Yeah, that's uh that's that's about what we need right here. So it's possible this long colony ship will be able to drop it on another place, which is why I'm not super disappointed. Um, unfortunately, this unknown fleet is unknown fleeting a little bit further, which makes me a little nervous about this being somebody's homeworld and us potentially settling next to it. And it's the Cylons. 
Nice thing is that the Cylons are not going to want to fight us. So there's hand lasers. Let's go ahead and uh, spy on the Cylons. Because that's what we do. Now the one unfortunate thing about the Cylons right now is that if this is them up there, they have access to all these places and I don't know if anybody else is going to be pushing back against them. But let's see if we can go ahead and try to get some trade going. 50 billion credits seems fine. Like I said, at least we have a friendly neighbor to the north. So we're not like getting maximum aggression. It's a it's something compared to some of the other saves that I've had where like I got airdropped with a bunch of uh, things. And let's not forget the neo humans are tiny and not good fighters. We actually have a uh, growth waste here. Fascinating. Governor, what you doing? There we go. All right. Um, so this will be fine. Let's hope to luck into fuel cells. There we go. Um, nuclear engines. I think I'm going to go for that next, just because I really want warp 2 at some point. I don't know if we need the uh, six light years away just yet. It may be, like, really good or necessary. Um, we don't have a scout ship here, though, do we? So, um... I guess we just throw you up there and hope that it's not hope that that's not somebody's home world. Um, we'll be a little awkward if it is, and then we'll just try to scout over here, see if we can just find another place to colonize. Like if I can drop a good colony ship over here, that would be great. All right, so designs. Um, we can copy this design, right? <coughs> oh, excuse me. Um, there we go. So instead of the standard colony base, you get a barren colony base. Shouldn't it cost a little more? But it means now we can. We don't have. We're gonna um, need to do this. So deploy design. We'll call this long colony B. B is for bear, and this is going to get really confusing later on. It's not Colony Bomber. It's just Colony Baron. Alright, so we need to we need to hard build some ships. And then we'll go back to research. And it should be okay. Um, wouldn't be wouldn't be a terrible idea to have you guys maybe build a scout. Can we get a scout in one year? We can. Okay. I just, the more information I can get here, the better. So, scout, give me that info. And then we have one long colony ship here ready to go. Another colony ship ready to go. I think that's their home world. Alright, well. Let's send a fighter escort over here. It's going to take three years to get there. I really hope that's, um, okay, that's definitely not a colony ship. That's got to be their home world. There's no way, there's no way they can send that over here. Um, because, yeah, they're pink. So at least we don't have, like, a super hostile neighbor at this point. Uh, spying activity, by the way. Oh, they don't like that we're spying on them, I guess. You know what I should probably also do? Wrong button. Um, should probably go up here, go to intelligence, and do just a tiny, tiny bit of spending on this. Um, we're currently losing money on trade. That's fun. So we're going to find out in just a second. Um, really? Okay. Let's get you down here. Like we need to we need to colonize this planet. I do not want to run. So we're gonna um So space lasers destroyed. Yep, that's their homeworld. Alright. I was a little afraid of that, but there we go. Um Baron. We got it though. 
So neo-human development on a very sad planet. And the worst thing is that we can't colonize north, but we got 50 more population. So neo this. Definitely send some uh, people up here so we can send 22. That's fine. Um, we have another barren place that we can colonize over here. I guess what I gotta hope for is that this leads to something good. I have a feeling this is not an occupied star, though. Um, okay, well, I guess I guess we'll see. So, I'm really glad we sent a fighter escort. It's nice when I actually make a good decision. Doesn't doesn't always happen that way. So we have propulsion that's kind of doing its own thing. I think we're safe to equalize allocations now. And which the reason you want to do that technically, I don't have any research going on right now. But uh, if you equalize, you get more going. But we're going to try to recover our population here first. So, Okay. Ancient Ruins. Huh. An improved terraforming from the Ancient Ruins. Um, we'll do that now. So, what did I say about keeping that long colony ship? We're going to grab that shit right now. Okay, so that's a bit of a turnaround from crap to crap to absolutely not crap. Okay, so we're still hard building a uh, long colony here. I'm really glad I didn't accidentally delete my uh, colony design here, which we'll need to do that in just a, just a little bit. But already, like, we know some of the planets they have. Like, that's unexplored. We may be able to explore some of this. I'm not going to try to, like, forward settle them or anything, but there's our long colony. Oh, that's right. We're not actually researching, so we'll, um, we'll grow back up there and be fine. So we definitely want to colonize here. This is, this is the land grab portion of the game. We just want to get everything that we can. And there we go. Another resource poor planet, but it's 65 people. So that's okay. Um, we can just retreat all. That's fine. It's nice that there's a button there. We don't always have to pop into everything. We know that there's something called a prime that they have. So we can check the military tab here. Prime is a medium ship. So we haven't seen any of their large ships yet. We just got to make sure that we play nice with them. Like if we look right now at our status. Our fleet strength is actually higher than theirs, but that's going to change a little bit. Their population's higher, which is not a surprise. Their production's higher. Uh, their total power is higher, but I mean, that's that's just part of playing the game on a difficulty where the uh, AI has a little, 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 little bit of an advantage over us production-wise. So hopefully we get Neobrax before anybody else does. Um, that'd be tough if like somebody started out over here, but Playing on a map like this, where we do have, once again, this is a fractal with leaves. It's possible that um, we can really take advantage of uh, some good long-range colonization strategies. Um, right now, you can't scout anything yet. So once we colonize there, we'll be able to do that. Alright, so another barren planet. Apparently, fractals are not great for development so we have a little bit of a terraforming going on here a little bit of terraforming going on here um i still think nah we'll, we'll do this first we've we've got a bunch of we've got a bunch of stuff here if we get a hold on this we should be okay there like i want to get i want to get both of these we're not going to be able to get the toxic planet yet but and we're already getting this. This is, once again, just land and everything. Cylons continue to shut down our spies. How dare you. And then you have population 26. Hostile, your population growth is a little slow, but it's gonna, it's gonna happen. All right. So EMC jammer's fun, but deep space scanner's important. And class two deflector shield's also important, so. Now, now we can officially go back into colony shipbuilding. So three years, we want to get six. 
One on there, one on there. We just gotta hope that this isn't like an AI person, but if it was, they probably would have colonized one of these by now. So let's go ahead and hit the next share button here, build a new colony. Neosolius, is that how it's pronounced? I should, I should learn to read if I'm gonna play this game. So I know we don't have to always watch them walk out into the dust, but Neosolace. -sol All right, so once again, we have our uh, people factory here. And so we can send, it's only a population 30 place, so we can send 15 people and be okay. And once again, they're resource poor, so it's gonna take them some time to have actual good industry. And um, I only have 56 billion credits, but I wonder, can I go ahead and just, I haven't been taxing my colonies. I'm not gonna be doing that yet. Can I, okay, we don't wanna rename these things. Industry view, there we go. I hate this. This is like, this is, okay, it's not that I hate it. I just, I just don't remember how to actually transfer funds from treasury. Who knew it was the tiny button right here. Um, we could send 56k, we can send 37k. Is that going to help build this any faster? A little bit. So we're def, we actually got it, thank goodness. We got an ancient ruins planet, I will be honest with you. This is the first time since my very first ever game of playing Remnants of the Precursors that I've gotten an Ancient Ruins planet. So we need to protect the shit out of this. So Neobrax is what it's known as, and it's been colonized. We're going to go ahead and prioritize a few more missile bases here. Um... We're definitely going to go ahead and send a healthy, large number of transports over here. And just to have a little bit of a deterrent squad. Okay. Apparently not much of a deterrent squad. <sighs> Can we send some fighters over here? Apparently building, hard building a, another colony ship is tough when we send half the population, but it's okay. We got the, we got the big one we wanted. Hopefully, hopefully this one is still there. All right, so we can scout. And you retreated, so I'm going to keep these fighters on the border. I don't expect the Cylons to ever attack us. Notice they didn't even try to go after us when we um, actually made them mad by blowing up their ship. And I meant to send you on a scouting trip over here because I need to know if this is something I can actually colonize or work with. But see, the long range, the long range strategy here is working out pretty well. Okay, so let's hit the let's hit the next turn. Well, let's see here. You know, we haven't talked to you guys in a while. We can propose a trade treaty. Let's let's up that crap. That's fine. Um, I don't know if they have any... You know, we can actually see if they have any contacts, I think. Nope, just us. So right now it's us and them. And we, and we get along okay. So next year, this colony ship's still building. This is going to be our people factory. Which means I could turn up the, um, I could turn off the auto governor here. We're terraforming right now. So maybe, maybe we just try to go growth one instead of just T-form. I know it's a little bit of micromanagement. It doesn't look like, it doesn't look like we're going to get too much here, so... Governor, just keep doing your thing. Normally what I've done in situations like this where I really want to be churning out people is to get actual um, more stuff there, but it's fine. Next year, we have more spying, and they keep shutting down our spies for some reason. 
It's almost like they don't like us spying. All right, so pretty soon our population's gonna be back up. Our factory situation's already pretty good. Can I go ahead and just get this built? That'd be nice. I like the mod feature of having a one over here. It's kind of extra visual indicator to see what's done, which is which is really nice. And then we'll build a complement of fighters to go down here. I need to make some new ships for sure, um, but we need to get our building and research done here. Oh boy. Okay, that is a size 75 ocean planet. So long colony again. So we are going to be expansionist as hell right now. So resource poor. I think I'd rather go for the uh, ocean planet that's a little bit more defensible up here, unless I'm something, unless there's something that I'm missing up here. So that's pretty lucky that we just saw that, and we can work our way back here. This is in a nebula anyway, so it's going to be a little slower if we get over there. But once again, it seems like our ability to like long colony stretch our legs out is working to our advantage so we still have a very slow growth on the neobrax with artifacts which means this is going to be a excellent research center and um you're, we have growth that's still going i did say i was going to build some fighters here Let's let's turn this off for a second. So how many fighters can I get with uh, three growth? There we go. All right, so we're gonna turn we're gonna turn that off for a second. Let these things let these things kind of go. So seven fighters is fine. We're gonna do another turn of seven. We're gonna do another turn of fighters, and then we'll do a um, just so we can have a little bit of a military presence. Oh, we found somebody. Excellent. Okay, so that's a minimal planet. We can actually colonize minimal planets. But I'm really glad that we're um, pushing down here now. So we have we have a Cyan sighting, but we don't know who Cyan is yet. So that's... um. Hopefully we're not going to make too many enemies here. By, by doing it this way. But here we go. Um, fighters... Let's just send the fighters down here. We'll split them off between our kind of border places. And then uh, before we go, let's build one more colony ship. Okay, don't want to go into waste here. We're just going to go one more time. Transfer funds, 38 billion, still three years, whatever. Okay, um... Still three years. But at least it's three years with extra population growth. That little bit of micromanagement. Will it make a difference early? I don't know. There was some games where I made some mistakes and really missing stuff by a turn or two made a world of difference. I actually need to scout some of this stuff over here too, but I want I kind I could be building a lot more scouts. If I were Zilmi, I'd definitely be building a lot more scouts. But we need to get on board with the research here. In just a little bit so unless there is like a spectacular planet in one of these like i'd call a 75 ocean planet pretty spectacular even the arid one's pretty good but i think we're mostly good right now like see here's neo mudor we could colonize that it's 55 and hostile but i think we need to focus on some tech so that we can build some ships just so we can uh, do some stuff here because I don't think anybody's gonna be grabbing this stuff for now But we'll have we'll have eyes on it in just a second. So Another long colony ship that's gonna go down here and um, How many turns is that gonna take ten years? I'm, I'm assuming that the nebula is only gonna affect it at the end, but this is where increasing our ships ability to have like better warp drives and stuff is going to be really nice. Like, like if we look at our text right now, hand lasers, meh. Nuclear engines move ships at warp two, uh, which is nice. And maneuverability is pretty important. 
But once again, you can see that the uh, fuel cells for like six light years away from colony planets is not mattering as much as we weave a wide web of uh, networks here. So let's go ahead and let's governor spending. I actually... I guess we'll colonize this just because it's going to open up. Well, let's not do it like that. Let's once again not do it like that. It'll open up this place. So we'll, this is our last colony ship, I promise. So there's a desert size 40. We call that good, but not like crazy. Just regular, just regular good. So we've got a lot of planets. And I think now we need to tech up. It's kind of one of those things where in any kind of 4X game like this, you gotta get what you get and then balance what you got. So here is another human look at the people. I think it's just the regular humans. Okay, and this is a size 35 hostile, ultra rich planet that is irradiated. So this is where I need to check my stuff here. I'm gonna go ahead and flag this. I guess we'll do sign because it's a uh, ultra rich. So that's something we want to do here. But I need to check my resources, check the manual, and because once again, the there is a whole list of tech for like what you build. I'm pretty sure it's barren, then tundra, then irradiated. But I'll have to check. Could be, it's not, I don't think it's toxic. I think toxic's one of the worst. All right, so did we actually forget to send you? I hope not. Well, let's go ahead and do this, so. Ooh, we got Mechlar. Erratic technologist. That's exciting. Was I totally wrong? I was totally wrong. Hey, y'all. So, Mechlar, we don't know who you are. We are gonna espionage you a little bit when we get a chance. I kind of want to throw a second spy in here just to see what we can get because right now the Cylon as is expected they have a lot of technology and uh, if we try to like do some diplomacy with them I'm pretty sure we are not going to be able to get anything other than this because they're always going to be better at teching than we are but fortunately they like us because they're making profits off of trade with us. So we're schmucks to them. It's fine. The normal human bonus of um, making money off of trades with everybody does not does not work for the neo-humans. Alright, so we're going to just let tech happen. Definitely going to build a colony here, so congrats. Looks like we got there just in time. Look, we got our we got our beachfront property. There we go. So walking out on the sand. Got sand in your boots. I mean, I love the illustrations here. And I've talked a little bit to uh, Ray Fowler before about the sort of design thoughts. These are all based off of like a lot of real locations and source art. And it's just fascinating to see. Did I see little glasses come up on the flag here? I'm pretty sure I did. All right, so we have population here. We actually have population that's gone pretty well here. I think we just need to let you keep growing naturally. But you, you're a little more of a problem. Let's do, let's go ahead and turn off the, uh, auto here and let's send transports from here and we're gonna send 20 because once again this is our this is our beach and then we have this place as well so neo new earth is gonna need to send some transports let's go ahead and send like 10 that's fine 13 is close to 10 so mechlar have been uh trespassing uh, wait, near where? Trespassing near our... Oh, the Mechlar. I was like, the Cylons haven't. Yeah, I guess they're technically trespassing because now they are in our space. And then we have intelligence reports. I don't think we're officially able to spy on them just yet. 
but it looks like we're getting pretty close, so let's go ahead and try to initiate some trade. So fortunately, I have kind of a loose cannon neighbor, not no offense to the robots here, and a friendly neighbor. So south, south may be some tension, but what I want to know is, is this Mechlar the homeworld right here? I'll be shocked if it is, but it's possible. Let's scout it now. I think that's some good information to finish this episode with, because this is going to be one of those things. I've kind of gotten into a rhythm a little bit, especially with like Star Sector, etc., of uh, trying to move stuff into like hour-long videos. But it doesn't... I mean, sometimes the game just dictates how long you're going to be going or not going. So I'm going to try to keep it in the 45 minute to an hour range per video here. And uh, if it runs longer sometimes, it runs longer sometimes. So let's see if this is the Mechlon, Mechlar, Mech homeworld. And then our goal next time is to start designing some ships based on the technology we get. Unfortunately, it doesn't seem like the Cylons have uh, much that we want to trade with them, but we're going to be getting a lot of that research pace back once we uh, fortify Neobrax and do a lot of stuff here. Actually, what I probably should do is um, send send some more people. Probably should have done that before. So they're still going to be growing. That transport has a little bit of time before it gets there. You know, honestly, well, it's sent. If we if we kill off our population too fast, whoops a doodle. Um, but I love that it's a uh, size 82 plus artifacts jungle, a better planet than the planet that we had before. Let's hit the um, next turn button because we have this long range colony ship over here. So once again, minimal. We can totally colonize this, and we're going to be doing that. But I need to get my we're going to kind of do the ebb and flow thing where we push out colonies, we do some teching up to get some better ships. Like you can see right here, a lot of our colonies and shit are just not online yet. So you need to be you need to be growing in place. And I'm going to lock you in on max growth right now because you're going to be our uh, people producer. Even if the um, industry isn't too great, the population production still should be Okay, but like I said, we're, they're sending a they're sending a lot of ships from over here, and they may be able to actually colonize this since it's minimal. But if that's the case, that's the case. All right, let's see what we got. Okay, so we're gonna colonize here. Maybe not the best colony ever, but uh, you can build a dude ranch out here. It's all good. I'm just nice rock formations. Not gonna say what that rock formation is. But let's see here. Let's actually look for the little flag this time. It's gonna have the, it's gonna have the little shades just on top of a blank banner. That's hilarious. All right. So another place that's poor, shield le shield level nebula. I need to look into what that means. I'm really glad. And that's a and that's a modnar mod thing. So it gives gives some extra details here. We're gonna send as many people as we can. And we're going to send a few more from here. Because ideally we'll have to send some people from another place. So our tech's a little slow, but once we get some of the slingshotting out here, like you can see right now, if we compare statuses here, they have more planets than us. Okay. So maybe I'm not totally off track with all of this mass colonization. So... We can't get the irradiated place yet, but that's a good thing to aim for with some of the technology. But maybe I do go for some of these deserts, some of these minimal planets that I can get just just while I can get them. But it also means that... Um, don't I have like a spare scout ship somewhere? Ugh. Okay. I, I used to know... Okay, one, two, three, four. Okay. That's not a scout ship. Anyway, one thing we can do here... Is send eight up here, eight down there. So I guess we'll have to find out what that is in just a, 
Just a moment. I guess we can send you down here now and it's fine. And then this scout ship is going to be able to do so much, so let's see here. We got two more turns in us. There's one turn. And, wow. Okay. That is a place I probably want to colonize as well. So we're going to, um... We definitely need to be growing back up here, because fortunately the population works really well. But I think our next goal is going to be just to keep churning out colony ships, because I got one here. We'll do, um, we'll do green for go here. This is, the little flag system is not something... I used enough last game, so we're going to do it here. So these are all places I can colonize. And uh, we're already colonizing that barren place. So the more planets we can get, this is a this is a pretty solid start. And we have uh, Lynx over here, so we can finally see one of their planets. Which means their homeworld may be over here. I saw a lot of flying from the other direction, but... Yeah. Remnants of the Precursors, it's a it's a fun game. It's a fascinating game. You may say, okay, wow, look at all the simple stuff. It's like shapes and maps and stuff. You don't have a lot of the 3D assets you get in so many games now, but what it boils down to for me, at least, is that the core gameplay loop is not just solid. It's great. It's deep. It leaves a lot of choices, and it leaves a lot of possibilities open. And that's where I'm going to leave this video, as a realm of possibilities where we have a good start with uh, some amenable neighbors. Maybe maybe a little bit scary from time to time, but definitely this fractal map has worked out really well because we've been able to uh, stretch really far with where we can colonize. Would be great to steal some of these systems if I can from uh, the Cylons, if it comes down to it. But Neo-Humans, not going to turn on the camera, but we can all put on our shades in our head and just say deal with it so that's it for now this is asher with remnants of the precursors like i said like the video to help to support the game it does help this as well but uh community for this game is great and i appreciate the comments you all sent me in my last series uh, inspired me to keep going here i really want to get another series out before the game releases december 25th it's still releasing for free but that's when the final 1.0 is coming out so be on the lookout join the discord join the reddit page look for other stuff if you want to but that'll do it here. You all are awesome, the best. I really appreciate you all. And we're going to do this again soon and find more ways that I can screw up in space. Take care.